All right, so we got two games here that lead us into our World Series game. And this is the most amount of World Series I've gotten in a single year. So this will be our third World Series icon. And honestly, even if you get one make World Series once a year, uh, that's actually a huge accomplishment that not a lot of people can do. So obviously the next milestone is 1,000 rated. And the highest I've ever gotten is 966, but I just don't play enough games nowadays to be able to get there. Um, but I am playing a lot better, which is nice. So continuous improvement. But this game, he is uh, wildcarding Roy Halladay, which is funny because I'm also wildcarding Roy Halladay. Uh, but this game, we're pitching Babe Ruth. And I think this is the last game I'm pitching Babe Ruth because he is getting harder to pitch with. Been really good all year. I think he's actually been underrated all year. I don't think people utilized him enough because his cards last year for pitching weren't that good. And his pars are getting pit pretty big, though, at this point in the year. He did the job for me up until we're in October and I'm still pitching with Babe Ruth. That's pretty good. I'm going to do commentary uh, a lot on the pitching in this game because I think going into games with a pitching approach and mentality is good for actually winning games. When you're at this point in the late 800 rating, you're trying to get the World Series, it's really important that you focus more on just winning games than just trying to get as many runs and hits as possible and hit the crap out of the ball and just put up as many runs as possible. Obviously, Hitting is superior. You can't win if you can't score. But I think it's good to have an approach for pitching. Now, most of my pitching strategy revolves around reading my opponent. And reading my opponent is really anticipating what I think they're looking for, but also keeping a log of their swings and what they're doing in the game. So having a good memory of what balls they're swinging at and what balls they're hitting hard, and then just trying to stay one step ahead of them throughout the rest of the game with that approach. All right, now on the other end, we're facing Roy Halladay. Uh, he, my opponent pitched really well with Roy Halladay. I'll give him credit. He used the four-seam fastball with Roy a lot. So when people face Roy Halladay, they usually think cutter, sinker, cutter, sinker, cutter, sinker all day. And the occasional splitter and the curveball. Uh, but he threw his four-seam fastball just enough, but not too much to really throw me off to where I was popping it up and getting flyouts on that. Other than that, I think I see Roy Halladay pretty well. Um, so other than those two swings and misses, uh, between all of the good pitchers in this game, when it comes to like John Donaldson, uh, Randy Johnson, or even Pedro Martinez and Roy Halladay, I would face, would rather face Roy Halladay. So let me know in the comments for you guys, who is a really good pitcher, a typically good pitcher in the game that you just particularly see well often. Now this hit I got lucky on, I'd be I'd be kind of frustrated if I was my opponent. Curveball below the zone. I hate putting balls out of the zone that get put in play for yeah. hits. So I got lucky there, I'll take what I can get. Yeah, haven't been doing good with Nick Castellanos, but first pitch of this at bat, uh, Chipper Jones smokes this one, hits it out. Good to get momentum on your side early in the game. Uh, nice comfortable two nothing lead to start. So with two strike hits and two out hits, and especially two out runs. When you get runs with two outs and at bats where you have two strikes and you're getting hits, be grateful for that. All right. Remember that you did that and never count yourself out of an at bat because those are huge momentum killers for your opponent and they give you a ton of momentum. So getting outs, getting runs with two outs is like one of the best things you can do in these in these games where you're trying to get the World Series, you're facing an opponent who is about the same caliber as you or has a similar record. You know, getting those type of uh, momentum boosts, like the two out runs, are huge. So try to get as many two out hits and runs as you can. Um, I get a lot of them in these next two games. Now this one, wish I got under it to get a little lift on it for a home run, but everyone likes those. A nice perfect single. Uh, Stan Musial, he's he's the guy, man. He This is his best card he's ever had. And uh, same with Luke Eric, who we'll show in a little bit too. All right, so Babe Ruth, um, I saw he's got a pretty good batting average with Shohei Otani. And so I just try to stay away. I didn't want to pitch inside to him, figured he would be able to turn on it. Um, so that's a nice pitch there. Now this curveball, a pitch I try to use sparingly with Babe Ruth. It's one of those pitches, if you put it in the zoom, it can really throw off your opponent. Um, especially in that spot where it's not directly on the corner. It's got a big par, so you gotta be careful with it. But pitches like that, uh, and here's a fastball just to test him early in the game because I got do nothing lead. He's all over it, so we know now that he can hit the fastball inside. Uh, but that's a free strike. 
anyway, this pitch is in the quadrants, like that curveball. Um, sometimes, if you're facing an opponent who's smashing the corners, who's hitting your really good pitches for hard exit velocities, sometimes you got to throw it and risk it kind of right down the middle of the plate. And if not right down the middle, sort of in that quadrant area where the quadrants meet, and just, it's kind of an odd spot to purposely put a pitch. Uh, but when you are throwing the, to the corners and throwing balls, those pitches can throw off your opponent. So with the Shohei strikeout, that was pretty big for that curveball to land right there and him swing and miss. Um, I think it just threw him off. Otherwise, it seems like an easy pitch to hit. All right, so Kevin Kiermaier is a guy I talked about in my last video, and a lot of you guys watched that and commented. And um, some of you guys commented for me to try out Bernie Williams at wildcard. Let me know who you guys are wildcarding this late into the year. Are there any cards that you've been using all year as a wildcard? For me, it's Jimmy Rollins and Chipper Jones and Jorge Posada. But right now, I think there's enough good outfielders that I don't feel the need to wildcard someone like Bernie. You know, we got Stan Musial, Kevin Kiermaier. If you want to wildcard Ken Griffey Jr., you got him, Mike Trout, Cody Bellinger, all these guys. And eventually Mickey Mantle, Hank Aaron. But uh, Bernie, for me, he's got everything I like in a hitter. He's a switch hitter with a short strike zone and great stats, and he's kind of fast. I just couldn't get it going with him. So uh, Kevin Kiermaier, if you saw my last video, I'm pretty stoked on him right now. Uh, and it's going to be hard for me to put Mantle somewhere because I really like Cody, Mike Trout, and Kiermaier, but I also like Stan Musial out there. We got Ricky Henderson, who you're going to see later in this video and the next game. And uh, all those guys are, are clutch and they're great. So... They all have speed too, um, so it's gonna be tough. But. So this ballpark, let me know in the comments what ballparks you guys are like playing at. I like to switch them up just for the visual aspect of switching things up and not playing at the same place all the time. He just gets under this uh, sinker here, but it's enough to get it out. I skipped the replay or the part where it shows the exit velocity, so I'm not sure, but I've gotten a couple like that. So other than that, I think this park plays pretty fair. You can sneak a couple over the left field wall and the right field wall if they're not hit that well. But other than that, I think it's pretty good field. All right, so this change up, one of those pitches, you know, down and in, it's pretty effective, but eventually if you throw too much, it gets crushed and it will at some point. And um, throwing it outside too, I, I try to use it sparingly, but uh, it's a good put away pitch. Even if you put it in the zone, swing over it. If it had a little less velocity, I think it would be nice. But I try to play upon um, my opponent. He's swinging at the high pitches a lot too, so. Just moving the eye level with that fastball and then the slider down below. And here we just go right back to where we started from on a full count. Tempt him with that short strike zone that Jimmy Rollins has. Just go above the zone. It almost looks like a strike and he's under it. So like I said earlier, my opponent really used the fastball well, the four seam fastball. A lot of people underutilize Roy Halladay's four seam. Uh, it doesn't have outlier or anything. That might be a reason why. But you see there, it's in that quadrant spot that I was talking about. It threw me off and got me to basically pop it up to center field even with good time and actually all three outs in this inning are on the four-seam fastball i'm pretty sure nick cassianis is a guy i want to get going with he's got a good card again and there it is the four-seam fastball in a very hittable spot uh crushable pitch actually and we get under it again so me thinking that's probably a cutter or maybe a sinker either way i'm a little late on it but not even on it with the pci all right, and then Chipper here got him earlier with the cutter to right field for the home run. This time he comes back inside with the fastball, and I'm just thinking that's a cutter again, and he got me. I'm under it, and I'm a little late. So all three fly balls with the four-seam fastball from Roy Halladay. So all those pitchers that have that one pitch that's not really their strength, if you use it at the right time, it becomes like the, the best pitch you can use right there. All right, now this inning was frustrating for me. So Mike Trout, great hitter, 2-2. Two -two. I tried to just put the change up on the outside. Gets the infield hit here, and uh, what happens after this is what really gets my opponent his momentum back in the game. So he had a good at bat here with Bernie. There was a couple times he checked swung where I thought he definitely swung. But either way, this pitch I was actually just trying to get in the zone, and I, I thought it was. So takes it for a ball. I don't know how you take that pitch. Uh, Shohei, kind of frustrated pitching now, so I just throw in three strikes. We get a three-strike strikeout, which is nice. But we go hard away, and then... Finally tested him up and in. I wanted to stay away from him inside, but we get him here because we haven't gone inside uh, against Shohei yet. Really good at bat with him. He works it to 3-1. And, one. and um, I try to go with that changeup. Like I said earlier, it's effective, but eventually it does get crushed. And he gets a three-run home run there. 
takes the 4-2 lead and takes all the momentum of this game. All right, so when you give your opponent the momentum like that, best thing to do is try to get it right back at that next inning. Don't let him have a good inning on the mound pitching to you. Um, this pitch right here, Stan Musial. It's it's just a Stan Musial effect, I think. He's a, he's a great swing. Um, so that pitch, I was actually under it a little bit. Not sure how I got that ball to go out. I've been focusing on trying to get under that specific pitch a lot because it's a good ground ball pitch. It cut her down and into a lefty. And that pitch right there, sinker right down the middle. Threw me off. So like I said, sometimes you got to risk that type of pitch, like a sinker down the middle to throw off your opponent and think the way that you pitched to yourself. But anyway, that cutter, um, yeah, like I said, trying to do a better job of focusing of getting under it and almost got under that one too much, but we got a little little lucky with that one too. All right, and then he comes back. The splitter was killing me this game. I actually think he could have threw the splitter a lot more and got me more on it. So we took the momentum back with that home run. I was struggling to hit the outside pitches, so we finally get this one on the sinker. And a nice little base hit for Lou Gehrig. 73 speed. It's the best Lou Gehrig card we've had. Um, so things could have got worse if I didn't, you know, make it a one-run ball game in this inning. So momentum is now slowly shifting back to even and back to my side. After we strike out Babe Ruth, his Babe Ruth with our Babe Ruth, uh, we finish with him, get him through four innings, and then we bring in Dennis Eckersley. Uh, I really like this sequence we did here. So sinker on the outside just to get a strike in there. And then just risk throwing a fastball right down the middle. Uh, it actually worked. So that's not really a pitch you expect right there. Very late. And then following up with this curveball, Dennis Eckersley has a really nice arm slot where it's not quite sidearm like Chris Sale, and it's not over the top, where that curveball followed up after a sinker or a fastball really looks like a sinker or a fastball, and then it just the bottom drops out, or the whole thing drops into the dirt. Um, so that was a nice sequence there. Dennis Eckersley should be a pretty good bullpen arm going forward. All right, Riley Green is a pitcher I think everyone should still have in their bullpen. If not him, Charlie Blackman. I have both of them in right now still. I know they're only 95 overalls, but with all the pitchers that we have now in the bullpen that are having velocity, Rob Dibble, you got Chapman, um, you know, all those guys. And it's good to have a person with a good pitch mix and a really big drop in velocity like Riley Green and Charlie Blackman. So if you don't have that pitcher in your bullpen that has a put-away pitch, like a change-up or something slow to throw off your opponent, I think it's good to keep one of these guys in there. All right, so we blank each other in the 5th, 6th, and 7th, and then he leaves a hanging curveball right down the middle here. Uh, not a good pitch, and we hit it 104 miles an hour off the bat. He's got Shohei Otani in center field. He's actually a good fielder with that card, and I think he just got a bad animation there. So we get a leadoff triple, which is huge for our momentum. We're only down one, and that's basically the tying run, almost guaranteed if we just put a ball in play to get him home. Now, Kiermaier, he's got good bunt, so I just tried to bunch to get the run in, get momentum. End up putting it in play with a ground ball, and I think he messed up the throw meter, so I get kind of lucky there. The run would have scored anyway, but now we got another guy on. No outs, and tie game, so we're threatening. Steal second, we're threatening even more. Momentum at this point, I think, is completely shifted back to me. And this Aaron Bummer card, I could not square up a ball. Uh... I think I put everything in play. I don't think I struck out against him, but nothing was good contact. So uh, that's definitely a card I want to get in my bullpen is Aaron Bummer. All right, so he goes up top and in with a fastball. Just miss it. Just above the zone. And I definitely got under it. Didn't reach up enough. Very close. So I want to make sure we get that run home. A run on second with no outs. That's really important to try to get that run home. And this is where I platoon... Ricky Henderson, because I just got that card. And I want to use him. Even though I know Cody Bellinger can hit lefties well, I just want to use the new card. So we platoon him, Ricky Henderson. All right, and this is a sequence where if I was my opponent, I would be really frustrated if it happened. We steal third. Very unusual. And J-Roll, who makes an error that Jimmy Rollins usually never makes, a backdoor cutter we put in play, and he should have had that. I don't know how I messed that up. Um, I sent the runner who was stealing home. So even if he fielded that, he probably could have had a chance to get the guy at home. But we get everybody on safely, score another run, take the lead now. And Ricky Henderson steals second too. So threatening to score again, putting another guy in scoring position after all that. Unusual. But hey, we're frustrating our opponent. Not necessarily intentionally, but 
it's looking good for us right now. All right, so ground out with Cassianos, two outs, two strikes as well. Don't count yourself out. There's still runs out there. And we go up to get this fastball again. This time it, it drops. I was a little surprised it wasn't a line out. I've had a ton of those where I hit it just above the zone and it's a line out. We were off it a little and I think that's what helped. So we score Ricky from second, get another run. Now we take a two run lead in this inning. That's a huge inning overall. Three runs, take the lead back by two. Score a lot of insurance runs. Those are big insurance runs, but we have a lot more hits than our opponent at this point. 10 to three. I didn't realize it at this point in the game, so it looks better than the run column. All right, and then this pitch here, man. Lou Gehrig is the real deal. Great swing. I love that on a cutter, too, where typically I'm early on that, but we wait just long enough for it to cut into the zone and we get down and get it. So, uh, great swing, Lou Gehrig. Now, this is where we start to open it up a little bit. So, we open up the gates of this game. It's 7-4 and a lot of momentum on our side. Um, he hasn't had any momentum in a while, so that's good. Just try to keep pouring it on to win these games. And then we get one with Jackie. So that cutter inside, it's tough. I throw that a lot. It can get crushed for some reason, particularly with the cutter. Even if you put it inside and it's out of the zone, but inside it can still get crushed for a home run. I don't know why. It's just one of those things you can get to sometimes. We did it earlier with Chipper, only that one was closer to the zone. And we do it here with Jackie again, too. Uh, he gets a double with Shohei Otani with two outs. So trying to get back in this game, but then almost squares this one up, too, the other way. We get it, though, on the sinker, get that out, and then we got one more game for World Series. Yep, right there, 17 points after that game, going from 870 to 887. So we're 13 away from a World Series. Now, there's been plenty of times where I've been in this situation, and only a win got us like 11, 10, 11 points for some reason. So it's not always guaranteed. Uh, it depends on your opponent that you're facing, but we did get it here, so... In this game, we are using the new Team Affinity Outlighter. And this is a great card. It's going to be a good card. The only thing I wish it had different was I wish it had a changeup. A lot of times I wanted a put away pitch and I would have used a changeup if I could, but we managed without it. There was a ton of balls in this game, pitches in this game that I threw out of the zone on purpose and that were put fair and in play. Um, so this opponent specifically was very uh, swing happy and trigger fingers so we swung a lot i just try to play off of that uh, pitching to him and yeah i used that as my strategy knowing that he was going to swing it a lot even if it was a little bit out of the zone because he did get a lot of those in play sometimes for hits too inside outs that fast or sinker up and in for a hit it's a good hit you know he's late but he got pci on it so it's fun i mean it works that's baseball Earlier, I was talking about wild cards and how I've loved Posada. Only thing bad about Posada is he does not throw out a lot of runners. He's got decent catcher stats. He doesn't have pop time. I'd rather use someone like Adley Rutschman if I had him or um, we don't have a good JT Real Muto card this year. But a catcher with pop time makes a huge difference for all these fast runners that are in everybody's lineups right now. But he's still, he's crushing the ball for me and he's, he's just insanely clutch on offense. I can't take him out. All right, so... I thought I got that curveball low enough. Apparently, I didn't. That was a little frustrating. Also thought I had him at second base. And he's safe there. So, at this point, huge momentum. I'm frustrated. This slider... Yeah, I put it inside. It ended up in the zone. I was surprised he was able to lift it. Um, so, he gets the one on the sack fly. If you're letting your opponent score one run in the first, the, the only good mentality you could have is you got to score one to, to win. you got to... Score at least one run to win the ball game, so just look at it like that. That one run means almost nothing. All right, so my opponent pitched Todd Helton, and Todd Helton's a good pitcher. He specifically, I'll give my opponent credit, pitched very well with Todd Helton. Uh, he mixed the change up, and it sucks that, you know, my opponent was hitting balls out of the zone, and our first out is a squared up cutter uh, a little early on it. But like I said, my opponent, um, I just wanted to try that because he had the shift on. If you guys have the shift on, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try to do that, but I don't really find it that cheeky. It's it's pretty easy to take the shift off. It's just a, a non lazy thing to do. But he mixed the changeup and the fastball really well with Todd Elton. Eventually, it caught up to him. The only problem with him is he left Todd Elton in way too long. So you'll see that. And then I just got caught looking at that cutter. So hey, two outs though. Remember what I said. Don't count yourself out of getting runs. 
Even though he threw the changeup well, I think he threw it too many times, and we square that one up. Really nice swing by Chipper Jones on the first pitch. The other way for a two-run home run. Now we have the lead. So from here on out, he did sparingly use the changeup and got me with it more, but uh, that time we were definitely on it. So with lighter, I was not throwing the four-seam fastball a ton in the first inning, so this is the first one I think I did throw, and uh, we get it by him. This opponent was early on a lot of stuff, though. He was swinging very early uh, on a lot of pitches and still making contact, so um, I had to be careful with pitches like the fastball, which I would assume he'd be on, but I try to use the fastball and the sinker sparingly, knowing that. All right, and my opponent, shout out to him. He's a Kevin Kiermaier knower. He's got Kevin Kiermaier to play, and he also knows that he has decent bunting stats. We got lucky here because I had the infield back and he bunted, but he popped it up. So got lucky there. Next time Kiermaier came up, I did adjust it. I think a lot of people know about Kevin Kiermaier. I mean, th I think this is just one of the better cards and I was sleeping on it, but um, really like that card this year. All right, Lou Gehrig, it's like I said, him and Stan, they just, it's just that card. He's that guy. The sinker wasn't really even on it. I was late, wasn't expecting to go out, but we push it out kind of inside out to left center field uh, and get another run there. So three to one. You got to have Lou in there and at least try him out if you haven't already. And Jackie Robinson, I'm hitting 491 with him with like over 60 plate appearances and maybe a bats, which is really good for me. So Jackie, for me, he replaced Hank Aaron. I try to limit how many right-handers I have on my team because I'm not typically great when there's a ton of them in my lineup. Uh, but Jackie's been unreal for me. He's probably my best hitter right now. Uh, and that, that kind of caught me by surprise. It is a great Jackie card, the best one, I think. And this sinker that we squared up with Kiermaier, wish I got under it just a little bit. Hit it 103 miles an hour off the bat. Unfortunate line out, but. All right, so we blank each other in the third and the fourth. Lou Gehrig, another inside hit. And this one was absolutely torched. Just a beeline right past the second baseman. I think that was the hardest hit ball of the two games. 150 mile an hour line drive. So we get Lou on with nobody out. So we just gotta make sure we don't hit into a double play at this point. And I do try bunting with Jackie every now and then because I, I just feel like if there's they're going to put 99 drag bunt and speed in the game, I'm going to try to utilize it sometimes. But work it to three and two, a great at bat. And I think this was the first walk I had in the two games, which is really nice. Didn't have a lot of walks. That was a good one for me. So funny enough, I actually tried moving these runners over by bunting with Kiermaier, but it didn't work. So one and one, I kind of got like a half check swing and got a swinging bunt anyway. So we got what we wanted. All right, this play is a little unusual too. Throws the fastball up and in like you saw last game too, the other opponent. And I thought he had time to throw it home when he fielded that ball. So I sent Lou Gehrig back to third, who the computer sent him home in the first place. Then when he threw it to first, I sent Lou Gehrig back home and just assumed he still had time to get him at home plate. So I thought it was going to be a, a double play. I thought I messed up with Jimmy Rollins on getting those runs at home. And he threw it to second. So we get lucky. Only one out there, and the run scores. Goes back up above the zone in that same spot where Rollins hit it, and we get that one. And then a pretty cool bat flip, too. That's the best bat flip in the game. That's just It's just awesome. It's flagrant, but it's so cool. All right, and then like I said, never count yourself out with two outs and bases empty. So we only get Cassianos on with a single here on a very early swing on a changeup that we squared up. I guess I got lucky because of, you know, the timing of that was bad, but we get lucky down the line. All right, and then Chipper uh, hits that backdoor cutter, which is a really nice pitch. We send it down the line. And uh, got to keep Cassianos at third there and, and Chipper at second. So still two outs, but two more runners in scoring position, which is awesome. Originally, I thought we were going to settle for six runs. And then Stan Musial, man. Just a beautiful swing on an inside sinker and just shoots it to the gap. Scores those two runs. We open the gate to this game now. Eight to one. Feeling pretty comfortable at this point. So you've seen it a lot with Lou and Stan Musial. They can they can hit that inside pitch on lefties too. All right, he gets a runner to second. It's one one to Chipper Jones. I wasn't throwing the fastball a lot, so I figured I I was maybe gonna get this by him for a strike. He was all over it, man. Just absolutely smacks it. It's great swing. Um so we we couldn't get that one to go. But you know what? It was worth the risk. Worst thing that could have happened. And we're still up five runs. So, good swing. It's all right. We'll just move on and learn from that. He can still hit the fastball. It would be nice to keep hitting, like, 490 or even over 500 with Jackie. Wasn't even on that one. Uh, good timing, though, so you get the sinker through the hole. 
Um, he's been incredible. I think we still second with him as well. All right, but two out runs, man. It's been the theme of this video all game, too. Um, we are able to get a ball down the line with J-Roll. Jimmy Rollins hits a pretty good pitch, too, on a, a slider that was not in the zone, and it was inside. Um, somehow, we kept it fair. I'd be frustrated if I was my opponent, but continuing to gain the momentum, make this game easier for myself. All right, and then Al Leiter was able to pitch the complete game as after this ground ball out, uh, my opponent quit. So Al Leiter able to save my bullpen. Great arm, pitched seven full innings. He's going to be a really good pitcher moving forward. And I wish I got one more bat with Castellanos. But that's it. We got the World Series there. That's our third World Series icon this season. Like I said, that's my most. So that's great. And there it is, 16 points. So that gets us to 9.03. I ended up selling John Donaldson because I already had one of him. And Grady Sizemore just doesn't intrigue me at this point in the year. I wish they dropped that card like way earlier in the year. There's too many good outfielders right now to really have him out there. And I don't think he's all that. But let me know if you guys like Grady Sizemore. So I just took the stubs I got from selling uh, JD again. And we're just not going to collect Sizemore. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you like the commentary, if you want me to do more games without the commentary, or more games like this where, you know, I uh, didn't comment during the game, but I replay it and comment over it afterwards. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one.